Hello dear students, in last lecture we have studied about the biochemistry of cancer and in that lecture we had discussed that one of the treatment modality for cancer is uh, the radiotherapy. So uh, today I feel blessed to deliver you the next lecture which is the uh, which deals with the radioisotopes and that which are used in the radiotherapy of cancer. So once again Park Mode from Department of Biochemistry and KP Savvy Institute of Medical Sciences welcome you all on the next lecture of radioisotopes in the medicine. And here I would like to start with the quote of Marie Curie. Marie Curie, she is uh, a pioneer in radioactivity. She dedicated her whole life in the in the research of, on radioisotopes. And what does she say? She says, nothing in life to be feared. It is only to be understood. And now it's time to understand more so that we may fear less. So here in learning objective of today's lecture is we should know what are radioisotopes, including definition. Then we will describe the utility of radioisotope in the medicine. And later on, we'll describe what are the radiation hazards and what are the methods to prevent radiation hazards. So let's start with our first uh, slide. That is, what is the radioisotopes? As we all know that this is an element where every atom has a core of positively charged nuclei, nucleus. And this nucleus is consists of positively charged proton and the no, neutron which have no charge. But both of this atom has, a, both of this a proton and neutron has a mass and atomic mass is dependent on the mass of this total total mass of this proton and ne neutron. Now the charge of electron is uh, generally balanced by the negative charge of electron. Now this electron are the small but fast moving pa particles and they, they, are, they, they, they keep revolving around the nucleus. Now isotopes, what are the isotopes? We know that these are isotopes are the element which has the same place in the periodic table. But why they are different? Because they are same in proton and electron but they differ in neutron means they will have same atomic number but they will have different atomic mass now whenever there is difference occurs so either that isotope can uh, isotope is stable in the given conformation of uh, uh, proportion of this neutron and proton and that remains stable or in other case, this uh, the isotope which is uh, which has different uh, proportion of proton and neutron. It is not stable, but it becomes unstable. Why it is unstable? Because it has excess of energy and it always tries to again spontaneous rearrangement of proton and neut neutron so that it becomes stable. So what this rearrangement happens within this rearrangement? It either emits its particle or it emits its heat. So they, uh, when this excess of energy is released in the form of particle or heat, it, it, get, it gains the stable arrangement of proton and neutron and it becomes a stable isotope. So these isotopes which were unstable previously but the, which radiates heat or particle, they are known as radioisotopes. And here are some of the examples of radioisotopes like iodine-131, 32 phosphorus, then uh, protein carbon-24 um, sodium and 51 chromium. These are few examples of radioisotopes. Now let's discuss what are the different types of rays uh, or particles that are emitted out by out by radio isotopes. So here you can see this parent isotope. Uh, it is converted into radioactive isotope and this radioactive isotope undergo radioactive decay. Now radioactive decay can be of different types like it can either um, gives away the molecule which is a positively charged and this particle is consisting of two proton and two neutron which corresponds to the um, nucleus of helium and this is known as alpha particle and this this is positively charged now second type of radiation it can emit is it is in the form of small negatively charged electron now these electrons are fast moving and these particles are known as beta rays now apart from 
wrong it's some sometimes only energy is emitted out and that is in the form of photons so these are the gamma rays which are the electromagnetic radiations so you can see that this type of radiation can be given out from the radio isotopes and this the phenomena of giving out radiation is known as radioactivity so let's see what is the definition of radioactivity so radioactivity is the spontaneous degradation of nucleus and transmutation of one of the element to another with consequent emission of rays of particle means there is a degradation of nucleus that is the radioactive decay what we saw and there is a transmutation of one of the element like this radioactive um, element is converted into stable element like daughter isotopes with an with uh, element to another with consequent emission of rays and particles. So here it is the definition of radioactivity. Now, what, how it is useful to our, or how it is used in our body in different processes. So here, like these radioactive isotopes, though they are radioactive, they are meta same as a metabolically active elements. Like a radioactive iodine can behave same as a non-radioactive iodine so the met they behaves metabolically and chemically same as original element with additional property of radioactivity so we utilize both uh, this uh, radioactivity of this normal uh, chemically and metabolically same molecules we'll see how we are going to utilize further so now let uh, before we study the different particle, I would like to introduce you with few of the legends of radioactivity. Now here comes Sir Sir Antonine Becquerel. Now he is the pioneer of radioactivity and he received Nobel Prize in 1903 for, for his research work to find out spontaneous radioactivity. Now you can see, uh, see that the same year this prize was shared by uh, now with uh, the couple that is a Curie couple and here Pierre Curie and Marie Curie both they received uh, received Nobel Prize to st uh, for their study of radiation phenomena. Now Marie Curie is a double recipient of Nobel Prize and in even in 1911 she again received Nobel Prize for isolation of radium and polonium. The legacy of this couple is for is followed, uh, it is taken care of by their daughter, that is Irene Joliet and Frederick Joliet, son-in-law. They also received Nobel Prize in 1935 for artificial production of radioactive phosphorus. Now this, you can see uh, dear students, how whole family was dedicated for the research in radioactivity. And even I would like to share the story that Ma'am uh, Ma Marie Curie, she died of radiation, uh, hazard uh, and radiation induced leukemia so that was a dedication of this family and i salute to them for their uh, dedication and hard work and uh, okay so now let's move to the what are the properties of alpha beta and gamma radiation as we all know that this ionizing radiation produces this trail of iron throughout the material which it penetrates and the penetrating power of radiation determine the ionizing damage that can be caused. Uh, and you can see here, the gamma rays are highly ionizing and penetrating power uh, is highest for them. And that, so that is the less for beta particle and least for alpha particle. Now, why it is so, we will see as we, st as we are going to study this particle. So here is the first particle, that is the alpha Particle. Now you can see alpha particle. It is made up. It is positively charged, made up of proton and neutron. As it has more mass, uh, so it has it has more momentum, and that's why these are not used in medicine as it it damages surrounding tissue more. So this is uh, and you can see this is and because of their high mass, they they have poor penet penetrability. They can only um, pierce to the 4 to 5 mm of the tissue and they are stopped by the small barriers hence it is not used in clinical study and here you can see the symbols are used to um, demonstrate alpha particle 
Now coming to the second type of particle, these are the beta particle. These are actually the electron emitting out uh, from the orb orbit of that uh, element. So here, this as electrons are fast moving and uh, uh, they have a negative charge and small uh, and less mass, they their uh, their penetration frequency is also high. So here you can see there are uh, beta particles are fast moving electrons. They are low weight, high speed particle, and they penetrate tissue to the long distance. That's why they are used uh, to destroy selective tissue, and mostly they are used for therapeutic purpose. They are absorbed by metallic metallic shit and are symbolized in the following way now let's come to the very important uh, radiation that is the gamma rays now these are not a particle but they are only electromagnetic radiation so gamma rays are pure pure energy uh, uh, rays and these are uh, you can see they ha don't have any charge and no mass that's why they are highly energetic and they have maximum penetrating power hence they are suitable for diagnostic purpose and they are used even they are used as a tracer and uh, as they are easy to measure uh, these radiations can be uh, easily measured when they come out of the body so they are uh, most of the radiation used uh, in diagnostic purpose are gamma rays and the symbol is only gamma. So now let's see a few facts about the radioactivity. So the as we know that the this radioisotope undergo radioactive decay to attain the stable configuration. So here there are two type of physical half lives which uh, which uh, which we described so either physical half-life or biological half-life so what is a physical half-life this is a time taken for reduction of activity to half of its zero value so this is the time taken by the radioisotope to reduce its activity half to half of its zero value okay now what is a biological half-life biological half-life it it is a time taken for an element to reduce its body concentration to the half of that administered so here you can see in medical practice we will concern about biological half-life more rather than physical half-life okay now let's discuss few of the units of radioactivity now this is a one Beckwell you can you can remember the pioneer of radioactivity sir Antonine Beckwell so this was named after him so this is a quantity of radioactive material in which a nuclear disintegration occur in one second now there is another unit which is known as a Curie and this is just uh, on few ca calculation with the Beckwell we get, get that Curie unit, but we will skip that and we will discuss the rointogen that is a rad because it is mostly used um, and it is commonly dealt terminology. So, what is the rointogen uh, or a, in short, it's a rad? It is a dosage to the tissue in terms of energy dissipated the, t uh, dissipated the tissue. So, here you can see the one rad is mostly this the doses of radioactive material which will dissipate 100 ergs of energy per gram of tissue. So, this was certain general knowledge like uh, details about radioisotopes. Now, let's come to the technique of using radioisotopes. So, here how we are going to actually use this radioisotope in medical practice. So, as we all know that nuclear radiation we get from the radioisotopes. So, this nuclear, now radioisotopes can be used in two forms. Either they are, uh, they are used as a tracer. Tracer means that this radioactive material or element is given uh, to the patient either orally or intra when injected intravenously. Now, as this, uh, as this elements behave like normal metabolic element it will follow its path in our body and we can easily trace the trace that element because it will emit the radioactive rays okay now second type of um, nuclear nuclear radiation we get in the form of incident rays as we have seen like x-rays and even in CT scan so what happened, how this nuclear radiation act in our body is that this nuclear radiation, it get concentrated in the tissue. 
and when it get concentrated in the tissue like i i will give you example of iodine 131 now as we all know that iodine is uptaken by thyroid tissue so this when we give it in the form of tracer dose it will after a few hours it will get concentrated in the thyroid gland but as this material iodine 131 is a radio isotope so it will emit high energy rays or particles so this particle can create image on the photographical plate and we can see it or even it can be detected by scanning this that section of the body and what we get in the result so after a few hours we can get the results like this you can see this is the thyroid gland and this this is black color is the radio i i radio isotope of iodine that is iodine 131 but can you see that it's not a regular uptake but at some part there is very dark areas which uh, which uh, which symbolizes that there is a high uptake of radio uh, iodine to this areas and these are this corresponds mostly to the rapidly dividing cell this rapidly dividing cell will uh, take up uh, iodine fast and these are known as a hot nodule so this area mostly it designates the presence of malignancy in that area now coming to the second part of the same uh, second part of thyroid gland or second scenario you can see here now here you can see this thyroid gland is enlarged and you can see the radioactive iodine present here in normal concentration on this lobe but what happened here you can see there is enlargement of gland but this radio iodine uh, radioactive iodine uptake is very less you can see this is very faint area because this is non-functioning tissue and this is this uh, this is uh, this is taken as a cold spot so mostly this is the non-functioning area and this is known as a cold nodule so here uh, you can see this can be an example of the endemic uh, goiter where this area uh, this uh, cells are non-functioning only uh, cells are enlarged so this is how radio isotopes helps us to point out the functional or non-functional areas now what are the precautions we, we have to take when we deal with the radioactivity so we have to use minimum dose for shortest duration to avoid the radiation hazard even radio isotopes with shortest half-life should be chosen so that it will give us burst effect and images are good in less time so this is this was a technique uh, of using radio isotopes now let's see in which areas of medicine this these are used so in medical application this radio isotopes are used in the research field or in the diagnosis of disorders and even the therapy of certain diseases so let's see one by one so what is the role of radioactivity in the research so there are different types of methodology where this radio isotopes are used so most oftenly used come is the tracer study as i previously told you that this tracer are the compounds which emits the rays and they follow the normal path of the uh, normal metabolic path so here uh, mostly the isotopes uh, with short half lives are preferred for tracer studies because they give more concentrated burst and they get removed more quickly from the body so radiation hazard is less and we uh, the result what we get that is the fast and enhanced so here uh, the example of tracer studies like 14 carbon we use to study metabolism of normal substances like acid or acetic acid. Even iodine 131, it is used to metabolic turnover rate of iodine. Then 32P phosphorus, it is uh, it is used to trace the nucleic acid synthesis in vivo. As we know that phosphorus is an important part of the nucleic acid. Now uh, 3H uh, label thymidine. Thymidine is again, it is mostly found in the very rapidly dividing cell during cell division. So this, the, uh, the 3H label thymidine, it will use to study cell division in different organs. Now second type of study which is uh, in research is isotope dilution or concentration study. Now these type of studies are used to 
I used to count the volume of certain compounds. So like here, we can like radio label tracer is introduced to an unknown volume. Okay, so tracer is known and it is introduced to unknown volume. After few times, means thorough mixing, the concentration of tracer is estimated. And now, hence uh, the the dilution or concentration of the tracer, which which uh, which will predict the volume into which it has been diluted. So this is the example is like again iodine 131 labeled albumin. It is used to quantitate the pool of substances in the body. Now others uses in researches like again 32P uh, phosphorus, it is used in the autoradiography for detection of nucleotide. Then 60 uh, cobalt, it is used for the irradiation of food packets. Now 24 uh, sodium labeled uh, sodium chloride, it is used for the identification of extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid of a, uh, in normal condition. Now let's come to the second uh, second use or a second field uh, of where radioactivity is used and that is a diagnostic field. And this branch is known as a nuclear medicine. So what is a nuclear medicine? Once again, we can see it is a branch of medicine which deals with the diagnostic application of radioactivity. And here, radio imaging of organs like thyroid, liver, bone take, takes place. So let's see what are again which radioisotopes are used again here also radioactive tracer are used but here mostly they are gamma rays emitters and again as ideal uh, ideal property of this tracer it should be short lived isotopes with uh, linked with the compounds now let's see a few of the example of nuclear imaging or nuclear medicine so uh, this Tracers are used in thyroid uptake study. So here you can see the 15 MCI of iodine-131 is injected IV for uh, uh, IV for to the patient, and the snake region is monitored after few hours. And what we get, you can see in this graph. So normally there should be 25% of uptake up to the two hours, which will increase to the 50% within the two to four hours. Now here's other graph. You can see this uh, the green green color graph. It is a hyperthyroid where you can see the uptake radio radioactive iodine uptake is very much high as compared to normal. While in hypothyroid patient, this radio iodine uptake would be much less as compared to normal. So with this uh, thyroid uptake study, we we can easily identify. Uh, we can uh, see the thyroid status of the patient now here one of the again example of thyroid which will be used how this radio isotopes are used for organ scanning so here you can see this radio uh, in the legion a you can see this is a no normal thyroid gland with the homogeneous uptake of uh, iodine radio label iodine but here in b you can see there are some areas where this uh, this has got darkened and this because uh, because of increased uptake of radioactive iodine so mostly it goes for the malignant mal malignancy and uh, the, the the patient will have thyrotoxicosis now coming to the third type of here you can see this is the uh, hetero heterogeneous uh, uh, heterogeneous patches and that's suggest of multinodular goiter and you can see there is a mix some are radio dense and some are radio lucent areas so this is a multinodular goiter now in d you can see the single very dark um, dark spot and this is mostly the solitary toxic nodule and last here you can see this is a diffuse enlargement but much lesser uptake of iodine so it can go for non-toxic goiter so this is how organ scanning is help uh, uh, is done with the help of radioisotope now another example of organ scanning i'll give you here it is for the kidney you can see here the Again, the iodine-131 label hippurin or diodrast is used. And uh, this, you can see, these are the different uh, opacities we can see of the kidney. And this all depends on the blood flow through the kidney. So we can identify any defect of blood flow, re renal flow through the kidney scanning.
Now, one of the important interesting facts about Technique 99 technician scanning is that it helps to analyze blood flow from the hard blood and that's why it is known as a nuclear stethoscope stethoscope also we use to count heartbeats and here it uh, the technician 99 scanning does the same thing that it analyzes blood flow from the heart another important uh, application of radio isotope in uh, diagnostic is the radio amino acids and here you can uh, see either radio label compounds like iodine 131 is used or even some radio label pharmaceuticals like iodine 131 with rose bengal dye or iodine 131 label hippuran can be used to for the radio amino acids now one of the important um, important technique again in the medical uh, nuclear uh, medicine is the PET scan. You must have seen the recently released movie of Sushant Singh Rajput where that, uh, the, that hero was suffering from osteosarcoma and lately he get diagnosed with the same technology that he is having the secondary uh, spread of that uh, tumor. So what is so let's study what is that PET scan. So long form is positron emission tomography. And this technique is used to identify functional abnormality in organ and tissue. Here again, same tracer materials are used and their uptake is measured by, uh, uh, by scanning. So here you can see this, but this isotopes which are used here, they are produced by a machine which is known as a cyclotron now this cyclotron produces a high energy particles like uh, and which compose of positron emission of positron and with certain combination of electron and even gamma rays also and these emissions are detected by pet camera pet camera and mostly this type of studies are used in brain or soft tissue to find out the spread of the malignancy. Here you can see this is the normal uptake of this radio, uh, radio isotope. But here you can see this uptake of radio isotopes is much increased. That means you can see there is a spread of rapidly dividing cell that is the malignancy. So let's revise what are the indication of positron emission topography. Uh, so mostly it is used in the cancer either to check the spread of cancer or to monitor the treatment of cancer and even to monitor the recurrence of cancer in treated patient so PET is used for that now in heart it is also used to see the areas of decreased blood flow and the, if the, this areas of decreased bl blood flow are most most vulnerable to undergo myocardial infarction so that's why it can be avoid it if we uh, in if we do this PET scan in suspected patient in brain it is also used to diagnose the alzheimer disorder seizure disorder and memory loss so again we can found a, find the blood <coughs> blood flow in the brain so this is about the positron emission tomography what is uh, what we know it as a PET scan so let's revise about the diagnostic application of radioisotope in medicine. So radioiodine is used for to diagnose thyroid disorder and it is used for the thyroid uptake studies. Now 24 sodium it is used for determination of blood volume and circulatory volume. In uh, then 59 sorry 32 phosphorus it is used to diagnose carcinoma of liver, bone, lymph node and spleen and even 59 Fe that is iron it is used to diagnose anemia or other blood vessel disorders now diatrust labeled with iodine 131 they are used to diagnose intracranial hemorrhages even the loss of protein git protein in protein losing enteropathy the chromium 51 chromium is uh, helpful to detect lifespan of rbc and it will help to monitor intravascular hemolysis now, technetium 99, we have it's a nuclear stethoscope. Apart from it, it is useful in the sin, uh, to detect the bone diseases and injury to the bone. While 133 xenon, it is used to diagnose pulmonary diseases. So, this is a summary of diagnostic application of radioisotopes. Now, let's see 
how this radi radiations or radioisotopes can useful as a medicine. As we all know that this the radiation are harmful and they, they attack the DNA that is the new uh, genetic material in the cell. So, so there are two types of action the, uh, this done by radiation. So either direct action, they directly attack DNA and there is a breaking of double strand of DNA or even single strand is also breaks, breaks there and that leads to the damage, DNA damage. Uh, now certain type of uh, action are the indirect action and these are the through the free radical. So free, these actions are mediated through free radicals and this free radical causes damage to the DNA. Now, when this damage is severe, the cells uh, cells uh, becomes dead. But if this damage is not so severe, then it is inherited. It is tra transferred to the next cell in the form of mutations. So, uh, so th these are the, the effects of radioisotopes on the cell. But how they are useful or, or how do we use this property? Now, one thing you have to remember that this radiation effect or the hazards <coughs> or effect of this radiation on DNA are more common in rapidly multiplying cell as compared to normal cell. And this property we use uh, uh, we use while recruiting radioisotope as a therapeutic agent. So here we can see this ionizing radiation acts on only rapidly dividing cell. So whenever it is um, radioisotopes is uh, induced to the cell, they will only kill the cells which are rapidly dividing. That means the cancer cells and normal tissues can be spared. So this is how we use uh, therapeutic. Uh, radioisotopes in the therapy. So let's see what are the different therapeutic application of radiotherapy. Now, now this radiotherapy can be used in the form of unsealed sources where source is open as compared to li as in uh, like liquid radioisotope substances like iodine-131 is used in uh, the thyroid carcinoma on treatment of secondaries of thyroid carcinoma. While uh, this 32P is used to kill uh, rapidly maturing cell in the polycythemia vera. Now let's see, uh, apart from unsealed sources, there are some sealed sources. Now advantage of using sealed sources is that this radioisotopes, they are in the closed chamber. So uh, the uh, closed, uh, and because of this, the radiation hazards are minimal. So here previously we used to use radium needles. Now radium needles have advantages that they have a long half-life so they keep emitting this radiation to the rapidly dividing cell. But disadvantages of radium needle is of leaking. So and this rim, uh, leaking of xenon through this radium needle are more hazardous. That's why radium needles are not used now nowadays. These are replaced by 137 cesium needles. Now, uh, this, uh, the advantage of this CD, cesium needle is that they uh, they have a long half life up to the 30 years so they can uh, this once this needle is um, placed on the target tissue it can work for long term now let's see what are the different types of radiotherapy so here we can see radiotherapy can be bracket therapy back in bracket therapy the uh, source is at the point of Sorry, the application is at the source. So application of radio, radioisotope is at the source. For example, like it can be intracavitary in the, the uterus, the radioisotope can be kept in the uterus when in the treatment of CA cervix or CA vagina, or even it can be kept in the intestine when treated with uh, while treating the buccal carcinoma. Now, second type of therapy is known as a teletherapy. Now, tele, in teletherapy, source of irradiation is kept at a distance. So, previously we used to use deep X-ray, which is an example of teletherapy, but not used now a day. Now, 137 cesium is again, as it has more penetrating power, so it is used for deep, uh, in the treatment of deep seated cancer. Now, another form is a linear accelerator. Here, there is the acceleration of electron. Electrons are accelerated to 
high energy and this high energy electrons are directed to the target tissue as they have a more powerful power accurate focusing focusing and minimal hazard so that's why these are more uh, useful nowadays and this is a use mod modality now though we are using different type of therapy for the radi uh, radiation uh, radioisotopes the effectiveness of radiation therapy depends on two parts one is the radio sensitivity of that tumor tissue so here we can have different type of radio sensitivity like lymphoma lymphomas and in that lymphomas hodgkin lymphoma uh, have high has a high radio sensitivity so they uh, the results are good with the radio isotopes they even neuroplasm now few tissues has shows moderate radio sensitivity and these are like epithelioma say say oral uh, cavity then carcinoma of cervix then see breast and carcinoma lung while there are radio resistant we can see the poor sensitivity is found in osteosarcoma and malignant melanoma now uh, second type of uh, second factors on which this effectiveness of radiation depends on mm -hmm. is the fractionation of doses as we all know that this radiotherapy is directed toward rap cells which are doubling or which are in the cell division phase but you can uh, as we all know that only 5% cells are in the the cell division phase at a time so giving whole dose at one time will will be uh, will not be that useful because the uh, either it will um, it will affect on the normal tissue and at most of the time only 5% cells are will be affected so what we do we do the fractionation of doses so uh, in this the total dose which was counted it is given in the specified period within uh, in form of 10 to 15 fraction so this is uh, this is a fractionation of doses now let's see how this radio isotopes are used in therapy so therapeutic uses of radio isotopes so here is a table you can uh, see like radio uh, radio cobalt this is used in the treatment of ca cervix and internal cancers then radio phosphorus this is used in polycythemia vera then chronic myeloid leukemia and squamous cell carcinoma then radioactive chromic sulfate it is used in pleural and intra abdominal effusion secondary to the malignancy then 32 phosphorus and 90 cerium is again it they are used in superficial cancer for example corneum now radio cesium is used it is 137 cs it is used in the treatment of chronic leukemia radio tantalum it is used uh, in bladder cancer radio gold it is used in malignant pleural and peritoneal effusion radio iodine is used in thyroid cancer and thyrotoxicosis then one of the yttrium that is 90y it is used in the arthritis of hemophilic patient so uh, so dear student you can uh, at least try to remember five to six uh, radio isotope along with the uses and you can find out common uh, which which are which can be placed in all the three category like research diagnostic and therapeutic so it would be easier for you to remember now let's go to the radiation hazard i told you before that marie curie she died of say uh, radiation induced leukemia and this even uh, this side effect of uh, radi radiation or radio isotopes was uh, was also observed in her when she carried this uh, radio uh, radioactive material in her pocket and she find that she got this red, uh, she got the dermatitis <coughs> radiation induced dermatitis because of carrying this uh, substance in the pocket and that that spreads out the awareness about the radiation hazard uh, hazard so let's see what are the radiation hazards the effect of radiation can be either somatic or genetic so somatic effects are also divided into two categories they are immediate effect and delayed effect now immediate effect like the patient cannot tolerate radiotherapy and that can be uh, demonstrated in the form of acute radiation syndrome this acute radiation syndrome it uh, has uh, the patient has gets nausea vomiting and leukopenia certain certain drop of wbc 
even RBC, that's why anemia and bleeding tendency because of deficiency of platelets. And it leads to lower, lowering of body immunity, so lower lowering of body resistance. And if it continues and we didn't stop, we do not stop this radiation, it can lead to the death within two to three weeks. Now, as we all know, that's this uh, up to the um, exposure of around 15 to 20 rad can lead to the leukopenia. But if the radiation is high as compared to one, as, as 150 rads, uh, that, that may lead to the individual death. Now, let's see what are the delayed complications. And mostly this delayed complication occurs because of uh, up, because of repeated episodes of radiotherapy. So here it will form the aging effect like graying of hair, then epilation means hairs can be removed very easily from their, um, from their tuft. So this epilation, then vascular and degenerative changes in blood vessels and cataract. So these are the delayed effects. Even or you can see the, uh, the delayed induction of neoplasm. That is also one of the major delayed side effect of radiotherapy. So uh, the, it, this the radiation therapy can induce carcinoma scheme, then osteogenic sarcoma, and even lung cancer and leukemias. Now let's move to the another category of radiation hazard, that is a genetic. I told you that when the cell doesn't die, it is this, uh, the defect is uh, give it inherited to another <coughs> uh, daughter cell in the form of genetic effect. So it is uh, inherited in the form of chromosomal point mutation and it may lead to the uh, sterility, even skin cancers and uh, lung cancer. So these are, these are the genetic effects which, uh, which, which, is, which are caused by the radiation hazards. Now what has to be done for the protection against radiation? So there should be a maximum permissible doses, which which should be um, uh, we should be defined for ready uh, for the radiation health worker. Like it should be up to the <coughs> five uh, uh, five um, MP uh, the maximum permissible dose, or for non uh, non radiation worker, it should be 0.5 maximum permissible dose. Now the source uh, we have to keep source at the farthest farthest distance as we can. Then we have to shield radiation sources and cover them with lead bricks so that it should not be penit uh, it should not come out of the, the storage point. Now handling can be done with the remote devices and uh, the one the one can use lead or rubber gloves and even lead apron. Now radioactive materials should be handled with high speed and uh, there is there should be low uh, lower contact, lower time of contact should be maintained. That's why we are using the radioisotopes, um, isotopes of ha short half-life so that it should be degraded spontaneously. So here we have discussed all the radi uh, ra radioisotopes and this is some, in, we can summarize like we know what are the radioisotopes. Radioisotopes are compounds which emits <coughs> radiation and undergo transmutation. Then we have seen the utility of radioisotopes in medicine in different fields like they are used in research, they are used in diagnostic purpose and even in therapeutic purpose. Then we take cognizance of radiation hazards which are somatic or genetic. In somatic they are also uh, immediate and delayed and then we have uh, we have seen how how we can avoid or how we can decrease the radiation health hazard. So this is all about radioisotopes and these are the references what, uh, what I referred to make this lecture and thank you for your patience listening and please do like, share and subscribe the channel for more such videos.